Imagine stepping aboard a luxurious airship, a marvel of 1930s technology. Now, thanks to colorized photographs, we can experience the grandeur of the Hindenburg in a whole new way. Join us on a journey through these remarkable images and discover the story of this iconic airship from its high-flying beginnings to its tragic end. Imagine floating serenely above the clouds on the Hindenburg, a majestic airship designed to carry passengers across the Atlantic Ocean. This wasn't just any aircraft. The Hindenburg held the title of the longest flying machine ever built with an enormous balloon-like body. In the 1930s, Airships like the Hindenburg were all the rage seen as the future of air travel. The Hindenburg itself even established a regular service across the Atlantic. Sadly, this dream of luxurious airship travel came to a crashing end when the Hindenburg was destroyed in a very public accident. The Hindenburg wasn't just a big bag of gas. It had a strong internal skeleton made of a lightweight metal called Duralumin. Imagine this skeleton like a series of giant Ferris wheel rings, 15 in total, running along the entire length of the airship. Between these rings, there were actually 16 separate balloons filled with hydrogen gas that kept the Hindenburg afloat. To hold everything together, the rings were connected by long beams running along the sides like rungs on a ladder. But the Hindenburg wasn't just floating around naked. It had an outer shell made of cotton fabric, treated with a special reflective coating. This coating served a double purpose. It protected the delicate gas bags inside from harmful sunlight, both the ultraviolet rays that could damage them and the infrared rays that could cause them to overheat. And speaking of the gas bags, they were a new and improved design. Instead of the old-fashioned way of making them, the Hindenburg's bags used multiple layers of a special latex material pioneered by the Goodyear company. Stepping inside, the Hindenburg was like entering another world, designed by the talented Fritz August Breuhaus. He wasn't new to luxury design, having worked on fancy train cars, ocean liners and even German battleships. The main passenger area, called A Deck, offered a variety of luxurious spaces. In the center, there were 25 cozy cabins, perfect for two passengers each. But the real stars of the A Deck were the grand public rooms. Imagine a posh dining room on one side, perfect for social gatherings during meals. On the other side, you'd find a relaxing lounge and a dedicated writing room. Take a peek inside one of those cabins. Each one offered a call button for superior service, a small desk that folded down when needed, and a wash basin with hot and cold running water, all very modern for the 1930s. There was even a tiny closet to hang a few clothes. Dinner on the Hindenburg was an international affair. The dining room walls were adorned with beautiful paintings showcasing the Graf Zeppelin's exciting trips to South America. One of the best features of the Hindenburg, panoramic views. Long, slanted windows ran along both decks, offering passengers breathtaking sights throughout their journey. While the cabins were comfortable, Passengers were encouraged to spend most of their time socializing in the spacious public areas. Now let's talk about something truly surprising. A smoking room on a giant hydrogen airship. Don't worry, safety first. This special room was kept at a higher air pressure than the rest of the ship, so any hydrogen leaks wouldn't enter. 
The Hindenburg smoking room wasn't complete without a classy bar. Tucked between the smoking area and the exit airlock was a small anteroom. This was the domain of Max Schulze, the Hindenburg's bartender. Here, he'd whip up signature cocktails for thirsty passengers. But Max Schulze wasn't just slinging drinks. His most important job was safety-related. He had to keep a watchful eye on the airlock door, making sure no one exited the smoking room with a lit cigarette, cigar or pipe that could spark a disaster. The Hindenburg's time in the sky was short but impressive. In 1936, its only full year of service, it made 17 round trips across the Atlantic Ocean. The first official passenger trip across the North Atlantic left Frankfurt, Germany on May the 6th, 1936. With 56 crew members and 50 excited passengers on board, the Hindenburg made its way to Lakehurst, New Jersey, arriving on May 9th. Imagine how smooth the ride was. The Hindenburg was known for its incredible stability. Passengers could even balance a pen or pencil on a table without it falling over. Takeoffs were so gentle that people often missed them entirely. They'd be chatting away, thinking they were still docked, only to realize they were already gliding through the sky. Now, a trip on the Hindenburg wasn't cheap. A one-way ticket across the Atlantic cost a whopping $400, which is the equivalent of over $7,800 today. The airship wasn't just for leisure travel either. It was also used for propaganda purposes. For example, it flew majestically over the Olympic Stadium in Berlin during the opening ceremony of the 1936 Summer Olympics. Sadly, the Hindenburg story took a tragic turn on May 6, 1937. While attempting to land at its mooring mast in Lakehurst, New Jersey, the airship caught fire and was completely destroyed. This disaster wasn't just a property loss. 35 lives were lost, 13 passengers and 22 crew members out of the 97 people on board. There was even one additional fatality on the ground. The cause of the fire remains a mystery, with many theories about what sparked the flames and what kind of fuel caused the inferno to spread so quickly. This disaster had a devastating impact on public confidence. People were terrified to fly on airships anymore, and the dream of luxurious air travel in giant, rigid airships came crashing down. Thanks for joining us on this journey back in time, friends. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll catch you on the next one.